Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adara and in this video I'm going to do an introduction to retool workflows for 2024. For those of you that have uh, been watching my videos so far, guess what? I just got a new microphone. It's this cute little puffball over here. Hope you're loving the sound quality. I certainly love this already. So retool workflows. As you may know, we've been building a lot of retail apps which require a front end to interact with our data sources. But what if we wanted to completely automate a process and run on a schedule or have it run on webhook call and then only notify us when action needs to be taken? That's exactly what the retail workflows product is for. I like to think of it as the automation layer of the retail platform. But as you can see, it's a series of blocks which we can then structure to have a certain flow or control flow of logic uh, to just run in the background. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right in and create our first workflow, which is an inventory management notification. So we're just gonna go ahead, click create new. And this takes us to our canvas where we can see two blocks out the, out the gates, a start trigger and a code block. So the start trigger is what fires off our workflow. And when we click edit triggers, we can specify this to occur on webhook call, or we can schedule to run this trigger, let's just say every morning at 6 a.m. I like that idea. So since we're checking for our inventory, I'm gonna to wanna to have it run every single day. And let's just delete this code block here since it's just for illustration purposes. Before going into actually building, the actual flow of our inventory notification system. Uh, I'll just walk you, walk you briefly through the different types of blocks that you can add here. So resource queries are the main ones where you can essentially connect to all of your data sources, any API, any database, and third-party software like Slack, Salesforce, Snowflake, like things like that you can connect in via your resources tab. Um, other blocks you can connect to is code. So this lets you write custom code just like we saw in the previous example or uh, uh, Python code now, which, this, which workflow supports. We can fire off another workflow so we can have this set off a completely different automation as well as query an AI LLM. So any LLM that you connect to your retool instance, you can bring into here and uh, use it to do whatever you want. So those are the main resource blocks. And then we have our logic blocks here, filtering, branching, and looping, essentially uh, allowing us to do conditional logic and change the control flow of the workflow. Finally, we have a response block, which we can have the workflow return a response for us and maybe, you know, status. And then last but not least, this is fairly new, uh, we can set a user task. So this basically pauses the workflow until a task is completed by the user in some other interface, and then it goes back and continues the workflow. So this is true human in the loop. So um, those are all the main different types of blocks that you can use to create your workflows. And before uh, actually creating our inventory management, our inventory checker, uh, let's act, I also just wanna show you one other thing, which is this get started um, icon. And it's essentially an AI generated workflow. So you can use it to just sketch out what your workflow could look like. And that way it can save you steps having to guess and look at a blank canvas. So I can say, check inventory and notify me in Slack if it's low, click generate. And it'll start generating the blocks for me, which is really nice. This can save me a lot of time trying to figure out what to write here. But for the purposes of this, um, video, I'm actually going to go and just do this from scratch and walk you through how to think about it. So we're actually going to go back, create a new one and do it again. All right. So first I want my notification system to go off every morning at 6 AM just to really wake me up. And then I want my workflow to check my inventory table and just see how much inventory I have in there. So I've created a table in our retail database called jewelry inventory. And if you're learning about retail database for the first time, I really love this product. It's a way for you to spin up a database instantly. And it has an interface that is as easy to use as a spreadsheet, 
but then it also has all of the controls and security of SQL that you can use to pull this and use as a backend in your apps. So we're gonna select star from our jewelry inventory table, click run. And we can see in the data block here that this query one block is returning all of the jewelry that I have. Let's just call this get jewelry. Now I want this to know if inventory, let's just say is less than 50. I want it to notify me because it's gonna take some time to get some new inventory. So we're gonna do a branch block. And this is a, essentially a way for us to write an if else statement into the workflow. So we're gonna say if get jewelry data dot, and let's just say length because this array is less than 50, then I want you to notify me on Slack. And so we're gonna go hit my resource query and we're just gonna use this workflows demo notification. Inventory is running low. You currently have get jewelry pieces. All right. So assuming we did everything correctly, we can go ahead and test out this workflow by clicking run. This pulls up the inspector panel at the bottom. This will let us look into each block so I can click see all my blocks. I can click into the start trigger block, the get jewelry block, and I can see what data is in there. Um, so I really like this for inspecting and debugging my workflows, but looks like everything ran correctly. So if we check our notifications, I can definitely see that I did get one here. Uh, and if I go into Slack, I can see my latest Slack notification here as well. So that is a very simple introduction to workflows uh, video we, where we queried a database, checked inventory, and sent a simple notification. Stay tuned for future videos where I'll show you how I automated outbound sales email copywriting with workflows, as well as some other fun ones like generating dad jokes and posting them to Slack for your coworkers. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give me a like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and hope to see you in the next one.